Hey there guys, it is me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week four of the GPC. Um, I have not stuck to my promise, again, um, and uploaded this on the Sunday, but I am again off work today, much like I was when I uploaded week three, um, so I now have got the time to uh, record this video. Um, week four, we are up against the Tennessee Tynamos and Redfin. Uh, also the, you know, the kind of like the, the fake Ethan, really, I guess. You, you're not the original. I'm sorry, Ethan. Um, but we are up against Ethan. He is, uh, free and o, I think, this season, and I am Owen free. Um, so I know going into this immediately, it's going to be a tough game. Now, I did, who's it I was talking to? I was talking to, I think it was Rufus on Twitter. He was telling me I had the type matchup, so... Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes, and I can see where he's coming from, because first up on the team, we have got a uh, mixed Mega Sceptile, uh, Giga Drain, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Dragon Pulse. Um, as you can see, it hits his whole team, um, except the Shaman, really. Um, my plan is Hazard Stack, so I can at least do some good damage to it if it wants to try and switch in. So, um, Mega Sceptile is definitely going to be a big player for me uh, this match. As is Mamoswine, again, looking at his team, he has very little for a Mamoswine, but then again, most teams in general have very little for Mamoswine. Uh, I'm AV, because it's one of my few things I have to take on Nihilego, um, and obviously, uh, Ice Shard will be nice looking at his team, it'll hit the Zygarde, it'll hit the Shaman, um, it'll even hit the Charizard to a certain extent, and Nihilego is pretty frail on the defensive side, so um, that's, uh, that's why I've got Mamo. And uh, Victini, again, something which can just do a lot of damage to uh, a team in general. I believe I'm a special Victini this week, with Psychic, Blue Flare, U-Turn, and something else. So it might have actually been mixed with Bolt Strike for something, um, obviously the Charizard, but with the Sun Up, the, uh, the, the Blue Flare will be doing a lot of damage to that thing, and most things on this team anyway, so um, that was my thought process behind the Victini. Uh, next up we have Speedy, Bulky, uh, Cabalion. I pretty much bought this just because I expected Aroma Cease to come along. Um, as a form of hazard removal, not sorry, not hazard removal, wish passing. Because um, I also felt like uh, the Zygarde and Swampert are pretty much coming. And obviously they do not have reliable recovery. And the Charizard as well. Um, he has Charizard Y, he dropped Pinsir for Charizard Y. So um, I felt like wish pass might be something into that, especially if I get Stealth Rocks up. And looking at his team, he doesn't have any hazard removal, which is fantastic for me. Because like I said a second ago, my plan for this game was hazard stack. Uh, we'll get to my Skarmory in a second. Um, and, and some phasing, because he, the only thing he's got that can recover itself is the Shaman uh, and the Aromatisse in his team. Charizard can, um, but it'll be a waste of a turn, um, and obviously it'll just be roosting off the Stealth Rock, so he's kind of forcing his hand to make that recovery play. Um, next up, we have got full-on specially defensive Milotic with the Rindo Berry and Mirror Coat uh, in hope to catch off, uh, sorry, to catch the Shaman off guard and get some massive damage off on that thing. Um, but in general, it takes on Nihilego all right. I'd say it takes on Charizard all right. Another reason to have the Rindo Berry is, of course, Charizard Y can be carrying that Solar Beam, um, and, and I can, again, Mirror Coat back in retaliation for that thing. Um, the Aromatis can't do much to me either, and I am Marble Scaled, so if I want to get, if he wants to poison me with Swampert or anything like that, then I, I will be Marble Scaled, and that Swampert will also not be able to touch me because um, Scald will not be doing much anyway because I resist it, and because of the Marble Scale, Earthquake won't be doing much either. Then uh, the final thing on my team is actually Skarmory with no attacks, uh, no offensive moves, sorry, this week, because looking at Ethan's draft, um, I don't have it in front of me, I'll get it quickly, so I'll go over it in a second. Um, he doesn't have any taunt users that I'm aware of uh, on, on his draft, so I was thinking, okay, I can use Raw, I can use Spikes, I can use Roost, I think I was default just in case anything got out of hand on his side, because he has got Toxic Spikes, um, or the chance for Toxic Spikes of his Nihilego, um, and he's obviously also got Stealth Rocks on the Nihilego or the um, Swampert, and I don't really want things on my team to be poisoned um, too much, so I had to bring to case, you know, just in case before I could set up. Um, my hazards. So that was pretty much my game plan going into that. So just trying to get up as much hazards as possible. I'm quickly looking up uh, Ethan's draft. Uh, Ethan's draft is like a 50%. Starmie, Clefki, Nihilego, Shaman, Swampert, Aromati, Seb Striker, Mega Charizard of Y, Kecleon, Spiritomb, and Ariados. So another reason to bring that defog was the potential for the um, sticky webs, especially as I have got some fast things on my draft. Looking at the Mega Sceptile mainly because it does outspeed his whole team, uh, barring any Scarfers. 
Um, to the point where I can actually run, I think I'm running mild on my set tile this week. Because I am mixed and I don't need all of the speed that is uh, available to it. So um, that was that was Ethan's draft, but as you can see, he bought what he bought on the screen. So uh, we're going to lead off with Mo uh, Goat McGoatface, not Boaty McGoatface. Um, let's get him up by Stealth Fox because I can see looking at his team, he doesn't appreciate them and he has no form of hazard removal. So I want my hazards up as soon as possible. Because I'm fat anyway, naturally, Earthquake does about half enough for leftovers. I can take another one. I'm going to switch into Skarmory. Um, Stealth Rocks are here. I, he could get out of the Toxic Spikes. And I'm not going to defog unless he does put the Toxic Spikes up. Um, but I'm just going to continue sitting in here and clicking the Spike button over and over again just to get these set up. And uh, as you can see, I'm actually outspeeding this Swampert. So I could have got my third layer of Spikes up there. Um, but I do Rooster and he gets the uh, Scald Burn crit. Now, Ethan getting crits is actually sadly a recurring theme in this game. And uh, we'll go over that uh, in, in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but because he knows I'm fast now, he clicks the earthquake there, expecting me to roost. Knowing it will probably do more damage than the scored will, unless he crits me again. But I've got all my hazards up now. Um, I'm very much expecting uh, an earthquake or, or a scored again, so I'm just going to go into my low tick here. Because I don't really have much else to switch into. Um, thankfully, he does actually toxic me here, which will, in the long run, help me uh, take on uh, the, the more physical things on this team. Mainly his Swampert and his Zygarde. Um, I'm going to make the switch into my Sceptile. Not sure if he's predicting that or not, or if he just wanted to go into something fat to take on my low tick. Um, but he he does get the you know initiative on that switch, and I have to switch out again because um, I'm not staying in and taking any moon blast. But what he actually does is he clicks the wish. Um, I can play some shenanigans here. I'm pretty sure he's going to go into Charizard because he's got no hazard removal. So if he can get that thing in for free, um, then then he's all good to go. So I'm going to click Raw. Um, it would also mess up any sort of wish passes or wish he wanted to pass off to himself. Um, so I felt like Raw over there, or there in general, was my best play. I'm going to click Roost um, because I, I want to heal, but he's going to click Earthquake now. Because he toxic my Milo tick before, uh, I do actually have somewhat of a better switch in now to these Earthquakes. But I'm going to stay in and continuously uh, Roost because I believe I'm actually healing up more than he is doing damage. Um, so I'm now back to about 50%. Enough for me to take a hit from the Zygarde, which is what I want. Um, I do stay in here expecting to go for an Earthquake again, and in comes the Zygarde, actually. Now, this is where uh, I make a misplay, uh, in my opinion, after watching the, the replay back. Um, Thousand Arrows obviously isn't going to kill me, uh, but I completely forgot, because I don't face Zygarde much at all. Uh, I completely forgot that I was smacked down. Um, so, I, what I should have done there was uh, Raw, because if this thing came in again, it would do another 31% with all the hazards. Um, and that's really limiting his uh, revenge kill opportunities with uh, Banded E-Speed. So, um, he does go into the Aromatisse here. I should have really expected that coming, or the switch out at least. I did go for the Dragon Pulse. And uh, I'm assuming this thing is especially bulky. I don't expect a, Dragon, uh, a Giga Drain will kill this thing from that range. So, I'm going to switch out to Goaty my Goat Face. He does click the Protect to actually scout what I'm going to do. Um, if I had something like Sword Stance there, that would have been extremely scary for him. Uh, because he literally has nothing to outspeed me at that point, and I could probably have just gone straight for his team. Um, but I do click the Iron Head there, and I just wanted to get off as much damage on that Aromatis as possible. Um, I'm going to stay in and click Toxic, because once Aromatis comes in again on Hazards, pretty much anything on my team will kill it anyway. So I feel like uh, Cabalion has pretty much served its purpose. Although saying that, it would have been quite nice to potentially have around for that Nihilego, just to Iron Head later on, in case he started setting up anything uh, a bit spooky. So uh, I, I bring in my Water Snake and uh, the Minor Tick, and I can pretty much just sit here and recover until he dies to the Toxic. Um, so that's a really nice combination of Hazards and Toxic coming into effect. This is kind of what I wanted to happen for the battle. Uh, I'm going to stay in and recover again just to try and stay as healthy as I can. Um, I'm pretty confident that the Shaman is going to come in here just to try and KO me. So this is where my Rindo Berry Magic, uh, sorry, Miracle play was, I was hoping would come into play. But he actually clicks the synthesis, and then I reveal that uh, I am Miracle. So that's that plan gone. Now, after this toxic, I'm expecting Sea Flare to kill me through the Rindo Berry anyway, but no, uh, apparently I lived. So if I had to click Miracle there again, um, I could have got some nice damage off rather than the school. So let's play my, uh, my behalf there. I should have calged that. But I'm not sure if that means this is some more kind of bulkier shaman uh, to try and take on my Mega Sceptile. Now, uh, he's going to sack off his Charizard here to Victini. Uh, I have now revealed that I'm special or mixed, at least, with the Blue Flare. And sadly, it does bring in the Nihilego. I, uh, something on my team pretty much die. What I should have done here is probably gone into my Mamoswine. Um, 
just in case, for example. Uh, I can bring in Cavalion on the Zygarde using Extreme Speed at some point. Um, but he does kill me with the Power Gem. And because I'm Assault Vest, I know that I can take any hit. Now, that Power Gem crit there is crucial to the outcome of the game. Um, we're talking about this, or the, the potential outcome of the game. We're talking about this for quite a while in Discord afterwards. I have to switch out here because Ice isn't going to kill, sadly. Um, I'm going to go into my uh, Mega Sceptile. Again, another crit. So there's three crits for him and a burn with Scald. I have nothing. Um, I don't know if this crit mattered so much because uh, I didn't even notice it the first time. Um, but that crit means that eventually uh, I do Giga Drain the Aromatis and get some health back. Now I don't know if, if I didn't get crit that little bit of extra HP I would have had and the HP I recovered from the Aromatis could have potentially meant that I could have lived a extreme speed from the Zygarde. Um, so after this Giga Drain, uh, no sorry, a Dragon Pulse, which is uh, quite good for me actually because he does get leftovers, he does get a bit more health back, which means my Giga Drain will be giving me some more health back. And as you can see I get 14% back, so if I didn't get crit by that Seed Flare, I could have potentially had like another 10% of health. And I don't think that an Extreme Speed from this thing would have potentially killed me, um, or it would have maybe at least been a roll. But this is without me doing the couch, so I don't know. My only play here at this point is going into Victini because uh, Mammoth Swine will kill, uh, die to an Extreme Speed. Uh, and I stay in and click Psychic. I have to because Searing Shot isn't going to... Uh, not Searing Shot, sorry. Blue Flare won't kill the um, the Zygarde. So I have to kick here, obviously, because I'm Choice Scarf. Um, and he's going to play the game where he's just going to Synthesis over and over again uh, until he's at a point where he can kill me with a Seed Flare or whatever other attacking move. I think he said he had HP Fire in the end, otherwise it was just complete food for the uh, Skarmory. He does go for the Seed Flare, sadly he doesn't miss, uh, he doesn't miss one Seed Flare because that's the only way I win this game now, uh, if he misses Seed Flare and I get Bicycle Crash, but he hits the Seed Flare, um, and uh, that's a real shame because I lose the game 1-0, uh, a very cl uh, close game, as you can see, um, good game Ethan, um, it, I was a bit salty after that game because them crits did have a massive play in the outcome of the game. Um, and it cost me my first win of the season. I felt I played quite well, to be honest, um, against a guy who has been doing really well himself this season. Um, and I was really hoping I'd get my first win of the season, but alas, the Hacks Gods were not on my side this game and didn't want that to happen. But uh, I'm glad that the Hacks is getting out of the way now um, before the D-League starts in a few weeks um, and the NPC C also starts in a few weeks too. So, uh, good game, Ethan. Make sure you check out all the links below for the GPC and all the competitors. If you did enjoy this video, guys, make sure you leave it a like and subscribe to me if you haven't. And uh, I'll see you later.